Testing, testing, still testing, still testing, 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 still testing. One, two, one, two. Testing. Move. Testing. Okay, is everybody ready? Thank you all for being here. I'd like to introduce Chief Defender Alan Tauber, who is here on behalf of the Defender Association of Philadelphia, which of course, which of course is the Public Defender's Office in Philadelphia. I also have with me Catherine, or as I call her Kate, Kachamani, a private attorney who is here, who is a liaison for the private attorneys in the criminal justice system, including some of the court appointed attorneys, and she is right here with us. Both of them will have comments in a moment. This will not be a very lengthy press conference, but it will be a very important one. And I say that because due to a once in a lifetime pandemic and due to once in a lifetime challenges in operating a criminal court system, we all find ourselves in a position where many defendants do not have a court date. Many defendants right now do not have a court date. In some instances, they do not have a court date simply because they came to the courthouse and the courthouse was closed as a consequence of the pandemic. There may be some other situations in which they missed a court date that actually took place and a bench warrant was issued. Often those reasons have to do with all the consequences of the pandemic, people having to move, people's cell phones no longer functioning, people losing their jobs, and other factors that may have affected their uh, performance and being able to come to court. I would like to tell you that we had certain representatives of the court system here because they have done a wonderful job of coming up with what I view as being a truly excellent idea for how to address this situation. Those court leaders include President Judge I.D. Fox, Court of Common Pleas Administrative Judge Lizette Sheridan Harris, and Supervising Judge of Criminal, Judge Lucretia Clemens. What they have come up with is known as the Back on Track Initiative. I'm gonna show you a flyer that will be available. The Back on Track Initiative. And the bottom line with the Back on Track initiative is that people who do not have a court date should come down to the CJC where we are right now, the Criminal Justice Center. They should do so Monday through Friday, Monday this 20th of September through Friday the 24th of September from 8 in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. They will not find me there. They will not find a judge there. They will not find a police officer there or a prosecutor, but what they will find there are representatives of the Public Defender's Office, the Defender Association, who will be stationed in the lobby of this building, who will speak to them as, as they come in to identify what their next court date is and to try to get them a subpoena so they can get back on track. Why is this a good idea? Well, if someone is a defendant, if your nephew, your uncle, your cousin, or you are a defendant and you do not show up for court, then a bench warrant may be issued. And when that bench warrant is executed, it will be executed at your home, it will be executed at your place of work. Obviously, that can be a problem, being pulled out of your place of work or pulled out of your home in front of your family. That is nothing that I, as the District Attorney of Philadelphia, wants. I'm sure it is nothing that the court system wants, and it's nothing that your attorneys want. I don't want you to end up in county jail, waiting for a bench warrant hearing in front of a judge during a pandemic, 
If all that has happened here is you're unaware of your next court date. What I would like to see, I'm sure, is very similar to what your family and your attorneys would like to see, which is that you're able to come into this lobby next week, you are seamlessly able to get your next court date and arrive at that next court date without risking the possibility of being stuck in a jail during a pandemic or pulled out of your place of employment or pulled out of your home when none of that is necessary and none of that is good for you or good for society. So without further ado, and with much gratitude to President Judge Fox, also to Judge Sheridan Harris, and to Judge Lucretia Clemens, I would like to invite uh, my colleagues, the Chief Defender, and also Ms. Cacciamani to say a few words. Chief Defender. Thank you, uh, District Attorney Krasner. Um, I want to thank the court for uh, providing what should be a simple and convenient process uh, for those uh, who are facing a uh, case or part of a case in our criminal justice system, um, who have lost touch with the case, who've lost touch with their attorneys, um, to provide a convenient process to get connected to the case, get information about it. And if uh, you are under the unfortunate circumstance of being subject to a bench warrant, to get that bench warrant lifted, we have been given assurances that the purpose of this program is not to seek the arrest of anyone. Um, our jails are full enough. Um, our, one of our priorities is to reduce the prison population. And we've been assured that this program is not about seeking the arrest of anyone, uh, but simply to get cases relisted, people's addresses to be updated. Um, the Defender Association, uh, whenever there is a court process that is initiated such as this. The Defender Association is committed to providing legal representation, counsel, and, inf and information um, to, uh, to its clients and others affected by uh, our criminal justice system. In accordance with that mission, we will have attorneys in the lobby of the Criminal Justice Center next week prepared to meet with anyone who comes to participate in this program, to provide the information and represent you to make sure that the processes that are going on in this program and in this courthouse are done fairly and in accordance with court rules and the laws of, the, uh, of Pennsylvania and the United States. Um, I want to make sure everyone understands what the limits of this initiative are. It is intended only to address cases in which people uh, are, face, are awaiting trial. Um, it is not intended to address uh, issues for people who are on probation or have questions about their probation status. It's not intended to address cases involving juveniles. So um, for, for, the, uh, for, a, for anyone who has questions about this or anything about their case or the criminal process, Obviously, they can all, you can always, they can always reach out to our office. We have attorneys there uh, at any given moment to field calls uh, and to address uh, any specific issues or general issues. Uh, but again, I want to thank the court for uh, creating uh, a simple and safe process uh, uh, to, help us, uh, to help us avoid uh, unnecessary uh, any unnecessary incarceration or uh, rise in the prison population. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you to District Attorney Krasner for inviting me here today to speak on behalf of court-appointed and private attorneys. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tauber and, and Mr. Krasner for your remarks. Um, the Back on Track initiative by the Philadelphia courts is a wonderful reach out to our criminal justice clients who due to the pandemic have lost all touch with the court system. Uh, I too would like to echo uh, Mr. Tauber and Mr. Krasner's thank you to the courts. I think this is a fabulous program. It's gonna bring people back in the loop without issuing bench warrants and I think that's a great thing. Um, I'd like to tell all my clients out there, if I've lost contact with you or any 
clients out there who have cases in the criminal justice system in Philadelphia. If it's an open matter, if you have a bench warrant, come in next week. It's going to start 920 Monday. It's going to run for five days here in the lobby of the Criminal Justice Center. This is your chance to come back into the system and to make sure that your rights are heard and protected. We can't help you if you don't come back and get your cases heard. Uh, this innovative step is a huge step in Philadelphia towards justice. And I would like to thank the courts for doing this. Thank you. I do not have an exact number for you, but I can tell you that the uh, total number of cases has increased during the pandemic, not because we weren't working hard, everybody up here was working very hard, but because the courts were literally closed down for an extended period of time. In my 30 years as a criminal defense attorney and civil rights lawyer who was in this building all the time before I became DA, I never saw a year when the courts were closed more than about five days due to snow. What has happened in the last couple of years due to the pandemic is completely unprecedented and got us to this very unusual situation where as the police continued to make arrests, which of course they had to do and they should do, um, even though they were making fewer arrests, we had a bottleneck. We did not have the ability to conclude cases in court by trial or by plea or even by putting them into A or ARD or other forms of diversion. So the consequence is that we have a very substantial backlog. We have had very substantial delays. Once again, no one's fault. Nobody asked for a pandemic. Um, and, and what has occurred during that period of time, especially with all of the economic challenges that have been faced by a lot of people who come into this courthouse, and the pandemic has been absolutely devastating for people who made less than about $40,000. Absolutely dev devastating. We have seen a lot of people uh, in this increasing backlog who no longer have a court date based upon certain decisions that had to be made. So that's where this comes from. I do want you to know two additional things, and I think that they are important to know. The first is that the easy way to do this is to come into this building next week between 8 in the morning and 4 in the afternoon. You do not have to go through security. You just have to come into the lobby. There will be tables there. The Defender Association will have attorneys to advise defendants and to give them subpoenas for new court dates so they can avoid some pretty nasty stuff happening. Um, I also want you to know that my office, the district attorney's office, prosecutors always, always, always when they're considering what to do with a case, look to see whether a defendant was compliant. Did they come to their court dates? If somehow there was a snow day and the day they were to come change, did they voluntarily come in? It is a factor to consider at sentencing. If someone is sentenced after being found guilty or pleading guilty, it's a factor to consider in terms of which charges you want to proceed upon. It's also a factor to consider in terms of diversion taking everything together and seeing that someone walked into here to get their next court date when they're not having a court date was not their fault, does it appear that this is someone who could perform well on diversion? So in every single situation, it will be of some benefit to people who come in here and get a new court date in terms of how their cases are finally resolved. I know that there may be some people who are physically unable to come in here next week or who are at work there's a lot of people working double, double shifts these days. So there is a second way that you can take advantage of the back on track initiative initiated by the courts, and that is by phone. Number one, please come in here, eight to four all next week. But if you cannot do that, here are the telephone numbers that you can use to call in to try to achieve the same result. They are 215-683-7004. Or five or six. So 215 683 7004 or 7005 or 7006. These are the three ways you can, the three numbers you can call. You can also go to www.courts.phila.gov backslash criminal calendar backslash name to find a next court date. That's another way to do it. 
But bottom line is come in here if you can, if you can't get on the phone, and let's make sure that we have a situation that makes sense for all of Philadelphia. Let's get your case back on track. Let's get all these cases back on track so that we are able to make sure that there are just outcomes in these cases and outcomes that are fair to people. The short answer to that is no. As with many other decisions that are being made in the public sector around COVID, everyone is closely watching things like the rate of transmission, the rate of hospitalizations, the rate of death that is happening locally and also nationally. They are looking to see how effective things like these boosters are, what the rate of vaccination is. They're considering all of these factors. People who know an awful lot more than me about medicine are considering these factors. And then the leadership of the court system has to make decisions about what to do next. Uh, I can tell you there are a number of jurisdictions in the United States where they have not done a single jury trial since the pandemic in March of last year. In Philadelphia, we have done some, but it is a trickle of jury trials. Right now, it's scheduled to be about four per week as compared to what would have happened before the pandemic. Um, I will say this, I have great confidence in the judicial leadership of the Court of Common Pleas at this time that they really are doing everything they can to try to keep the system moving, even though it's moving more like a stream than a river. I have great confidence in that, and I also have great confidence that they will exercise sound judgment when they decide how widely they can open the courthouse doors. I don't know if there are any other questions, either for Chief Defender Tauber or for Attorney Kate Cacciamani. That's correct. We've been assured that this, pur the purpose of this uh, initiative is not to um, seek the arrest of anyone who has a bench warrant. The purpose is to uh, give people information, um, get their cases listed. For those who want to uh, go through this, take advantage of the convenience of this process uh, to get back, to get their case uh, moving. Um, but either way, we will be at the front door uh, meeting our clients uh, with all the information about their cases available to us uh, and we'll be counseling them appropriately. Um, we have, have every reason to believe that, um, that this is none, none of this uh, will, uh, will lead to any new arrests. No, it, they're, they're, it, the, uh, the idea is that uh, folks have uh, folks have lost touch with their case, so uh, there are many people who uh, have had cases listed and um, have not received a subpoena for appropriate ser legal service. And so their case sits in limbo uh, and their status is in limbo. Um, those are not bench warrants. There are others who may have bench warrants uh, that have been issued. Uh, it's very depends on the circumstances of every particular case. Um, but the idea is that, um, as, we, as it's been described to us, the, the purpose of the program is to get cases listed uh, so that people can address, uh, you know, address their situations. I mean, they can call our office um, if they have a question, if they, if, there's a, if they suspect it may apply, they can come. As I said, we will be at the front door to, to, meet, uh, to meet people and give them legal counsel about their case. We will have access to the information about their case. Uh, we, have a, uh, we, have a, we have a very uh, capable uh, electronic case file system, uh, which allows us uh, to, uh, at a push of a button, get the information about our clients uh, and can counsel them directly in person. That, that that that's how it that's the purpose of uh, that's the purpose of the system is to get a bench warrant lifted and get the case relisted. Sure. All right. Uh, I don't have an exact number, but I will say this, Mr. McDonald. I believe there's probably in excess of a thousand cases where defendants do not know what their next court date is, either because the courts were closed on the date when they were scheduled to come to court and therefore they could not receive a new subpoena, or because they have lost 
track of what's going on. It may be more. It may be more than a couple thousand of those cases. But we think it is extremely important uh, for people to come in. Let's, let's just, you know, let's cut to the chase. What are we talking about? We're talking about defendants walking in to see defense lawyers. They're going to come in and they're going to talk to representatives of the Defender Association, who are defense lawyers, who don't arrest people, who don't lock them up, who don't have handcuffs, and those people are going to advise them. 95, maybe 99 percent of the time, the advice is going to be, hey, great news, here's your new court date, take your subpoena and go. Maybe 1 percent of the time or 5 percent of the time, they'll have to say, hey, come over to our office and talk to us or consult with your private attorney and talk to your private attorney because this is a little bit different. Uh, but anyone who is fearful about walking across the threshold of the criminal justice center should not be. You're not going to end up in a courtroom. You're not going to go through security. You're going to talk to defense attorneys who are going to get you a new court date, and then you will be on your way. Are there any other questions that we can address at this time? Are there any questions for our representative of the private bar, Ms. Kachamani, about the position of defendants who have private attorneys? Not at this time. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I would be very grateful, and I think my colleagues would as well, if this spread far and wide. I know you cannot control it as the media, but that is kind of your job. Uh, it is my hope that both through social media, but also through television and other forms of media, we can get a whole city informed, and then we can all be in a much better position. Thank you very much.